to the Corinthians. Brethren, you gladly put up with fools because you are wise yourselves. For you suffer it if a man enslaves you, if a man devours you, if a man takes from you, if a man is arrogant, if a man slaps your face. I speak to my own shame as though we had been weak in this matter. But wherein any man is bold, I am speaking foolishly, I also am bold. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I, to speak as a fool, am more. In many more labors, in prisons more frequently, in lashes above measures, often exposed to death. From the Jews, five times I received 40 lashes, less one. Thrice I was scourged, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I was adrift on the sea, in journeyings often, in perils from floods, in perils from robbers, in perils from my own nation, in perils from the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in the perils from false brethren, in labor and hardships, in many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those outer things, there is my daily pressing anxiety, the cares of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I am not inflamed? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that concern my weakness. God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forevermore, knows that I do not lie. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of the Damascenes in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. If I must boast, it is not indeed expedient to do so, but I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body, or out of the body, I do not know. God knows that he was caught up into paradise and heard secret words that man may not repeat. Of such a man I will boast, but of myself I will glory in nothing save in my infirmities. For if I do wish to boast, I shall not be foolish for I shall be speaking the truth. But I forbear, lest any man should reckon me beyond what he sees in me or hears from me. Greatness of the revelations should puff, puff thee up. There was given me a thorn for the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Concerning this, I thrice besought the Lord that it might leave me, and he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for strength is made perfect in weakness. Gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities, that the strength of Christ may dwell in me. And the Holy Gospel. is taken from St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, 
When a very great crowd was gathering together and men from every town were resorting to Jesus, he said, he said in a parable, the sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and was trodden underfoot, and the birds of the air ate it up. And other seed fell upon a rock, and as soon as it had sprung up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other seed fell upon good ground and sprang up and yielded fruit a hundredfold. And as he said these things, he cried out, Who has he, who, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But his disciples then began to ask him what this parable meant. And he said to them, To you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And those by the wayside are they who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart that they may not believe and be saved. Now those upon the rock are they who when they have heard receive the word with joy. And these have no root, but believe for a while, and in time of temptation, they fall away. And that which fell among the thorns, these are they who have heard, and as they go their way, are choked up by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life, and their fruit does not ripen. But that upon good ground, these are they who with a right and good heart having heard the word, hold it fast, and bear fruit in patience. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. It isn't always easy to read St. Paul, is it? You start off and you try, but St. Paul gets right down to the point, and he tells us about it. Because of the weather conditions today, Father is not going to have catechism class. Wednesday of this week is the feast of the purification of the Blessed Mother. It is Candlemas Day, the day we bless candles. And any of you who have candles, uh, please try to have them here before Mass of, uh, of Wednesday morning. It's a very beautiful day, the purification of the Blessed Mother. And I think that uh, if any of you, if any of us, those of you, of course, who live closer, uh, should try to make an effort to be here for Mass. Next Sunday, we will have the distribution of ashes because we have uh, the Feast of St. Blaise coming up and ashes will be distributed at Saint Bla uh, on the feast itself feast day itself and next Sunday. We will have the usual, since we have first Thursday this week, the Holy Hours and first Friday, all day adoration. And of course, first Saturday is first Saturday. In the back of the church, it, where the bulletins are, you will find some of these little white cards. I would like for each of you to pick one up. There may not be enough out there. I have more. Uh, but uh, at least to begin with, I'd like for you to try to have one per family. And of course, if you want more, you know that you'll be welcome to them and I will have them here next Sunday. Little cards are really self-explanatory. But before I go any further, uh, as all of you know, we have said many things many times about 
our private devotions and that our little prayer books uh, are sometimes bulging with these little prayer cards in them. And, and I tell you that you should try not to do that. And here I am giving you another one to put in your book. But this one is important. Of course, it's said that each one of those is important. And sometimes we may wonder, well then, where does it stop? But may I suggest to you that insofar as we are able to determine what is recommended in this card right here was recommended by the lips of Jesus Christ himself. And that being the case, I am sorely tempted to believe it. And it's a simple devotion. Our Lord came, and we're starting Lent. We're beginning with Lent pretty soon. And the only reason and purpose of the coming of our blessed Lord was the salvation of souls. His suffering was extreme. And the very fact that he, the second person of the blessed Trinity, the Word, loved enough to come here to take on our own insignificant form of man and to suffer and die for me and for each of us, that demonstrates something that is truly important and our divine Savior's div uh, 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 extreme devotion to save sinners, to save souls. If according to what he himself said more than once, many times, that every time this act of love is made, at least one soul is saved, if not many souls saved. Look at what you and I are capable of accomplishing every time we say seven words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How long does that take? Just seven words and you have done something that our Lord wants very much. The salvation of souls. Today, salvation of soul is really um, a matter of little significance. Who cares? Who really cares? And yet, my beloved people, if the Creator Himself, as Christ certainly was, because He was God, He was one of the persons of the Blessed Trinity, if the Creator Himself was willing willingly and lovingly subjected to what he was subjected for the sake of your souls and my soul, then, my beloved people, if I can participate in this program, if I may call it such, then, goodness gracious, I will. And I ask you to do likewise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. My beloved people, as I said a moment ago, St. Paul is not easy to read sometimes. And today is the day that uh, he kind of lets loose and is uh, sounding very much like he's feeling sorry for himself, but he's not. He's not boasting either, though it sounds like he is. He isn't boasting. Last Sunday, if you remember, we were trying to make a distinction between that which is purely natural and that which is uh, supernatural. And that 
Many times, many of us do many things that are really great, that are really wonderful. But for some reason or other, we are incapable, or we don't think about it, or negligent, let's use the word negligent. We are negligent in taking that which is purely natural, that we do every day. We give to the poor, we feed the poor, uh, we build hospitals, uh, we send money to the people who suffered uh, with the flood. All of these are wonderful things indeed. In our own homes, as we have said before many times, we, we scrub, we wash dishes, we uh, cook, we sew, we go to work, we put up with all of the stuff that I call it stuff because it is stuff that goes on at work, in the work market, in the marketplace. But simply because we have been negligent, simply because we have been negligent in just doing no more than the simplest little thing that could be asked of us to do. It, sim it, it cannot be any easier when all I've got to do the only thing I've got to do I'm scrubbing floors I don't like to scrub floors it's grubby it's messy And all I have got to do is simply say this. Dear God, out of love for you, I give you this. And immediately, that little act of love is capable of absolutely bursting the vaults of heaven. Just those few little words. And the power of my scrubbing a dirty floor, which ordinarily is looked upon as menial, and only little people scrub floors. Important people don't do that. To speak as a fool, as St. Paul spoke this morning, that scrub brush took on a power that no monarch has ever, ever enjoyed. That's all it takes, beloved people. Our blessed Lord did not come down here to give us a plan, as some people insist on saying and insist on teaching, not here, but in other places. A plan that is impossible. The plan of our blessed Lord is totally possible is totally easy if I just had the recollection enough and the motive enough to take that scrub brush and turn it into gold. He gave you and me, thanks be to God, he gave you a grace a tremendous grace. 
is the grace of faith that you believe and I believe and that belief is fed by love and by confidence I trust in God And because I trust in God, or the other way around, it makes no difference. I love God. And because of my trust and my love, I have faith. What is wrong with the world today? What is wrong with those all around us? I hate to keep saying this, but it's the truth. And you know it. Our brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and mothers and fathers and sons and daughters, etc., etc., and etc. What is the basic problem with any of them? They simply don't believe. And because I don't believe, that is the result of their lack of confidence and their lack of love. To love God is the greatest privilege that could be bestowed on anybody. We're coming to Lent. St. Paul this morning told us all about his problems. And we could compare these problems of St. Paul and the way he handled those problems with the doings that we do. And had his motive been other than what it was, had his motive been something other than what it was, then everything he did, everything he accomplished, every shipwreck, every lash of the whip, everything at all, would have not amounted to the space that it took up in a sentence in a book. In today's bulletin, there's something, else. I always want you to read it. Sometimes you all don't, but I want you to. And not just once. Anything that's important, you've got to read it more than once. The first time you read it, you simply see words. You see punctuation marks. And you see grammar. And you see this. And you see that. And all of the unimportant things about whatever is written um, come out to you. That's what you notice. Then go back to it. Read it again. Read it slowly and give it time to speak to you. Put it down. Go back. Read it a third time. Or maybe even a fourth time or as many times as you wish, because every time you read something that is important, it has something additional to tell you. Again and again, my beloved people, 
I emphasize to you, we emphasize to you, our purpose and what is our purpose. The salvation of our immortal soul. That is the only reason why you and I were put here. Do you understand that? Do we understand that? Therefore, anything that is not in conformity with that purpose has to be put aside. Now, this is not to say, my beloved people, that those of us and everybody has to today. In former times, it wasn't quite like this, but today it is like this. You have to go out and you have to make a living to feed yourselves and your family, families. This is inevitable. You cannot avoid it. You must do it. And if you fail to do this, you are failing in responsibility. And we all understand what the marketplace is like, don't we? And we all know what the marketplace has to offer then, my beloved people, go there with suits of armor, spiritual armor, and let no bullet ever penetrate that armor. Last week, we spoke of leaving things, of having things on the natural level. You have got, and I have got to take that which is on the natural level and lift it up and put it on the supernatural plane. Simple, if we just but do it. But in order to do that, we have to go into the interior self. You know, the average person would face a firing squad today, or any day for that matter. But the average person would, fa would rather face a firing squad than take a look at the interior self. Because the interior self is that which makes the difference. And I like to do, I'm inclined, I'm drawn to it as metal is to a magnet, to that which is evil. I myself am not essentially evil, neither are you. God did not create anything essentially evil. But I am inclined I'm drawn to, I'm attracted by that which is not good, that which is not God. And only in my own mind and nobody knows what's in this mind but me. And when I do this or that, or the other thing, whatever it may be, it is the working of this mind. And when I pick up a book to read, nobody knows but me about that book. and why I picked it up to read it. And today, 
Nobody knows but me. In the absolute secrecy of my mind, Well, when I'm looking at the box, and something flashes in front of me, what do I do? Nobody, neither wife, nor husband, nor child, nor mother, nor father, nobody, but two people, not but two individuals, God himself and Satan. And I continue to look quietly, unobserved, and while this is going on, The very flames of hell are playing all around me. And I continue to look. I continue to read. I continue to visit. I continue to think. I continue in anything, no matter what it is, that is not of God. I can smell the smoke that comes. But somehow or other, that smoke does not offend me. And I continue. Instead of having the courage. Now here's where it comes in, my beloved people. How much courage <laughs> armies don't have that kind of courage. How much courage and conviction and love of God does it take for me simply pick up said arm and put said finger on said button and change the situation. But I don't have that courage. Then I sit there and look. And the thing that is so horrible is that, you know, uh, well, you don't know. The thing that's so horrible is that what is the seed we were speaking of this morning that fell in various places and had various end results, the seed that was planted at that moment, when I failed to have the courage to change things, that seed will grow and grow and grow. And years and years and years later, the accuracy of that scene will be as clear as crystal even a bit embellished. My beloved people, Lent is on the way. Let us this Lent do that which nobody else cares to do. And that is to present to God a love. I speak of love, don't, I don't misunderstand me when I use the word love. The world today has taken the word love and has absolutely stomped on it and made it something very, very ugly. Love of God, that's the only payment 
that I am asked to make for saving my immortal soul. And if I love God, everything I do, from scrubbing the floor, getting along with my wife, or getting along with my husband, or taking care of my children, or going to work at the marketplace, or whatever else I have to do, just because I love has been turned into something that is beautiful, important, and it adds up to the salvation of my soul. All we're asked to do is simply to change our motive. And again, in the secrecy of my mind, nobody, 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 knows the motive. Lent is coming for serious people with serious intention to give serious worship to a serious God. And that is that, my dearest people, my dear.